Hey guys, this is Naveenia. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and back to our interview tip series. We have already prepared tip number one and tip number two. I hope you must have seen that. If you haven't, please go and check the description. I have already given the URL for those two videos. Now, tip number three is also very, very important because this is a common question people will be asking in every round of your interview. Either they are taking the first round, second round, third round with the director, manager, first round with the some QA guy taking your interview or any dev guys taking your interview, they will be asking about your, what exactly you're doing in currently? Tell me your practical experience. And the answer also should be very practical. You have to be vocal about your, what exactly currently you are doing. So one thing, sometimes we do a mistake here that we talk about for the, uh, for the team point of view. No, interview is for you, not for your team right they really want to know what's your roles and responsibility in your current project that's why in the resume also we never write that okay we were involved in this activity we have to write that okay i was responsible for these these roles and responsibility for this activity for this process i was majorly involved instead of we writing we were involved right so make sure that okay you are highlighting your experience your knowledge your skill set your responsibilities your roles in the current project so I'll give you the best answer for that. According to me, maybe uh, you may differ or maybe you can add some extra points also later on in the uh, comment section of this video for that. It will be helpful for others as well. So what we can do, let's see, I started this project around one year back or two years back when I started the automation things were not there because application was very new. The project was very new. It was in the beginning, in the initial phase. So we never thought of doing automation because there is no point of doing automation. So with this line, it actually a very matured line that you understand the value of automation that when to start and what to start. It's not like we are crazy for automation from the day one that we have to do automation. I will not touch the application manually at all. It is not like that and it will never happen. That's a wrong attitude that we discussed in the second video also or in the last video also. So what we have to start with that, you have to showcase your QA skills, your QA mindset, how good you are in discussing the things or uh, analyzing the things and discussing and communicating the things with other developers, product owners, stakeholders, management. You have to focus on the QA activities and the QA mindset thing. So I'll start like that, that uh, when we started this particular project, it was not at all in the good state. A lot of QA processes were missing. No manual test cases were there. Nobody was aware of the how many test cases or properly bugs also. We were not writing it properly. We were just discussing it with the uh, developers verbally or sometimes we were just sending the email or just sending the you know Slack channel or chatting them that, okay, hey, this is the bug that I found. It was not at all very well documented also maybe in Zira or Bugzilla or Quality Center or whatever that uh, we were not using all these things. Although... These platforms were there, but it was not properly managed there. So you can mention that. So with this thing, you can say that then I joined and then I started this process. I tried to educate people and try to tell them that, hey, this is what we have to use. We have to maintain the proper test cases. We have to write the proper uh, bugs with the proper information so that later on it will be helpful for us to debug the code or check the things that did we really raise that particular bug or not. In fact, for the newcomer also, it will be easy for them to analyze the application or to go through the application with the test cases and the existing bugs. So that is the first thing that I tried to implement there. And then I was discussing a lot of things with the developers and the product owners. I was majorly involved with the, all the sprint, uh, sprint cycles, whatever the sprint planning, retrospective meetings and other brainstorming sessions that I used to spend with the developers, the client and the stakeholders and with the PO. So that gives a mindset, okay, yeah, this person is very mature, understand the importance of testing, when to use what. It's not like from the first day we have to start the automation. It's not the mindset. Then uh, we moved our, our first release and then we got very less bugs from the production, but there are a lot of other things also that we have to improve in terms of testing, in terms of development process and everything. So we tried, okay, first of all, that a lot of unit test cases were missing. So my responsibility to make sure that, okay, developers are writing the proper unit test cases or SITs like integration test cases also. We were not having the proper pipelines, deployment also very manual steps. So we tried to contribute over there as well. We tried it, okay, yeah, everything should be automated with this way. At least the process should be automated. It was taking a lot of time. So let's see, two weeks of a sprint that we were spending. And then uh, 
seven to eight days taken by the developers and hardly we were getting two to three days for our testing and everything. And those days also that we were not getting enough time for the testing for that because most of the time we were analyzing the requirement and everything. And then we were raising the bugs and then again, we were waiting for the uh, new cycle, a new build. So that was taking a lot of time in the beginning, but later on, uh, good that, okay, we educated the people and then a very mature team that I got. And then we were like, uh, decided, okay, let's go with the process along with the, the scrum master and the product manager. We tried all these processes, uh, very properly. And then after that, you can start your automation things that we started with the API automation or backend automation. See, if you have the API automation experience, you can mention this thing. If you don't have, you can ignore it. You can directly, you can directly jump to the a web automation that I'm going to tell you after this. So with this API, you give some certain number because let's say 20 APIs or 15 APIs or 25 APIs were there, which were very well documented in Swagger or maybe some API documentation or maybe in the conference page. We were reading those uh, APIs documentation and then we were hitting those things in the postman. And then later on, we tried to automate, I mean, design the entire automation framework with the rest assured library or any XYZ library that you wanted to use, you can use that. You don't need to explain each and every micro detail about your framework because this is not the question. It is about only your responsibilities. Then you say that, okay, my contribution was to design this framework, created most of the utilities and design the initial uh, test cases so that my other team, they can also follow. And then later on, they extended the framework by adding more and more test cases on top of that. So my role is that decide the tool, and then pick the best tool according to our requirement, according to our use cases. And this is the tool that I used. And then I suggested this tool and then we started the automation without wasting our time. And then you can give a number that we achieved around 90 to 95% automation we did for the API, which is actually quite achievable. Then once the thing is done, then I suggested, okay, let's try to integrate because our automation also is very stable. Let's try to integrate with the main CICD pipeline so that whenever the execution is happening or any kind of PR is getting merged to the master branch and the main branch, then automatically our test cases were getting triggered and it was generating the report, publishing the report, and then giving the report via Slack channel or email or anything. Then later on, we decided, okay, that, okay, let's start with the uh, web automation. So I took an initiative that, okay, again, I did some brainstorming that which is the right automation tool according to our application. Then slightly you can mention about your web tech here. Maybe your application made of React application or Angular or anything. It was having very, a lot of uh, heavy edX components were there and a lot of uh, application initially was also very slow and it's a completely dynamic application. So we thought, okay, codeless automation tool will not, might not work here. Then we started with uh, some open source. We were having some budget issue also. You see that, see these small, small points, budget issue. It's not like I suggested some tool, which is taking around thousand bucks per day or 10,000 license at $10,000. We have to pay for the license and everything. So we thought, okay, no, let's go with the open source. Let's start with the Selenium or Playwright or Cypress, whatever the tool that you want to give a name, you can give that. It's totally your opinion, whatever you are using in your current project. With this thing, we started with the web automation. And then initially my target was focusing only and only on the uh, happy path scenario or the regression. We never tried with the web automation that we are targeting around 70, 80, 90% of the automation with the web part. No, we were just focusing on the happy path scenarios, very important use cases. So we created a checklist or we were having our manual test cases also. And out of those manual test cases, let's say 200, 300 manual test cases were there in the Zira. We created a flag and in that flag only, I mean, or created a drop down. let's see, is automated automated cannot be automated. So three, let's see variables or three options that we created in the Zira against every test, we were updating it. So initially one week we did this uh, brainstorming along with all the QA members. We sat together, did a meeting and we decided, okay, can we automate this? Can we automate that? Can we do this? Or is it really automated or not? Or can we not automate this also? So with this exercise, we actually got a complete picture that, okay, this is a set out of, let's see, 300, 80 test cases that we have to automate initially or hundred test cases that we have to automate initially. So with this thing, it's showing that you are involved with the team doing a lot of brainstorming and creating a complete matrix kind of thing or mapping kind of thing that what can be automated from the manual suite. Okay. Then we started 
automation. So I was involved majorly in the utility creation part. And then initially we wrote some sanity test cases around 20 to 25 test cases. Then we were uh, regularly executing them. And then we, I was publishing the report and everything. And then we got a confidence in the web automation framework also. Our application also are quite stable in that case. Then I started hitting other test cases as well every sprint. So we started uh, in, we started giving the estimation for the automation for the web automation also in the current, uh, in every sprint cycle. So that is also, you can say that, okay, why automation user stories are important and uh, the estimation is important in the current cycle or in the current sprint. It's not like it's a, you know, extra activity or third or second or second party activity or third party activity. It's, it's not like that. So that's why we suggested to the uh, product manager that if you really want to achieve automation in the project, we have to start uh, involving uh, automation user story points also here. And they agreed on that because we have already delivered the API automation thing. And then we started with the web automation with the regression suite and everything. And then later on, again, we were integrating with the main pipeline with the CACD and everything, if you want to mention that. So with this thing, you can say that around 30 to 40% web automation that we did, but still it was not uh, getting completed because we were not getting enough time for the web automation point of view, because we were having so many new requirements, so many new changes happening in the current application. So that we are majorly involved in the exploratory testing discussion with the PO and uh, and the developers and everything. But whatever we have developed, 30, 40%, we are still regularly maintaining it. So tech depth maintenance is very important in the framework. API plus web both. Whenever new changes are happening at the API level, we are making the changes there. Whenever some changes are happening at the web layer, we are making changes and updating our test cases also there. So my, after that, my major responsibility is that regularly running the test cases, automation test cases, giving the report, analyzing the report on the basis of uh, how many test cases got passed and failed on the basis of that. If any failures are there, it's a bug in the application or it's my script issue. If it is a script issue, maybe X path locator or maybe CSS locator got impacted or, or something got impacted in my script. I have to update my script also. And then it's the application bug. Then we have to make sure that, okay, highlight those things as well that, okay, this is what we have found through automation and making sure that we are putting in the zero also and logging a bug also in the zero. So with this approach, you can give your complete roles and responsibility in your current project instead of giving the typical answer there. Now, later on, if they, you know, interrupt you in between, because it's a quite little long answer. If they interrupt you, then later on, you can add the similar kind of points. Okay, now please continue. Okay, what exactly you were doing in terms of web automation or API automation? Keep continuing or keep saying or keep, you know, giving the best answer or best uh, practical answer like that. Later on, if you really want to add a couple of other points in terms of testing, let's say non-functional testing. So later on, we decided once the application is stable after a couple of releases, after two, three months, we started doing some performance activities also. We pick Jmeter or Gatling or K6 or whatever tool that you want to mention. So you can explain or highlight your performance testing or performance engineering concept also. You can mention that. If you really want to add some security testing also, that also you can mention that. Accessibility testing also, if you want to mention, you can mention that. Or any type of any non-functional testing you want to uh, you want to add, you can add that. But focus on the main practical things that you are actually doing, which is actually giving some certain value to the team. Majorly what your roles and responsibility, what is your contribution for that particular activity? And don't forget to highlight the testing things or testing activities, which plays a very major role. Because when you go with the good product companies or any company, in fact, go with the you know manager round. So manager is not about looking for only automation guy. Manager is looking for is this guy is having a QA mindset or not. He's a pure, he or she is a pure QA person or not with the QA mindset. How exactly he is seeing the things for the QA point of view, getting the requirement, discussing it and uh, make sure that, okay, the quality is very important for you. Make sure that, okay, you are talking and discussing with the client and the customer and getting involved with the the you know the sprint retrospective and sprint discussions on your requirement discussions and everything making sure that okay the bugs are getting logged properly or not 
making sure that, okay, you are maintaining the documentation for the QA point of view and the writing the proper test cases, executing the proper test cases, publishing the report, giving the report that, okay, with every cycle, how many test cases got passed and failed, highlight these things at the time of interview. Instead of saying a typical or theoretical answer that, yeah, I was doing this. No, it was not my cup of tea. So I was not aware of it. No, it's your team. It's your project. You should be aware of all the QA thing. Whatever the QA process is that you are using it, then you should be aware of it. You should not say that, okay, no, I was not much involved because my manager was doing it. I have no idea about it. If they're asking about, were you involved in the uh, test planning or automation test plan? Yes, I was involved. Because without you, without the QA team, uh, the entire QA team is not involved. As a manager, I cannot prepare a plan for that. So test planning, that's a wrong concept. It's not about only uh, the manager will prepare or team lead will prepare a plan. It's a very, you know, old school stuff. These days, everyone, QA is same. There is no as such like manager or, you know, fresher or three years experience guy or five year experience guy. No, it's a team responsibility. Everyone will sit together. We will create a plan, which tool that we have to use. We will do the brainstorming, which, what kind of test cases that we are going to automate. We need input from everyone. So this is the kind of culture that we were trying to set up or I was trying to set up. If you are a senior folk, that is a very, very positive point. You can mention, okay, while giving the interviews. So this is how you show your maturity in terms of uh, experience, your testing activities, your testing mindset and everything. Right. So don't give the typical answer, give better friendly answer the way you are talking to your friend or uh, talking to your colleague, the way you are discussing the same thing with your colleagues or any newcomer who is coming to your company and giving the KT same thing. You're trying to explain to at a time of uh, interview also to the interviewer that this is what I was doing it. And in between, if any counter question or any kind of uh, discussion that they want to have it, do it very practically that what exactly you were doing it. Another thing is don't bluff. Don't give any wrong input. Don't say that, okay, you were not at all involved. Let's see, for example, API automation or any automation, but still you are mentioning in your resume and then giving the wrong information. That could be a backfire on you. If you're not involved, let's see on database or in this area, no need to mention that. You can simply say that, okay, no, I was not involved into these things, but I'm having the basic idea. You can mention that if you have no idea, simple say that, okay, yeah, be honest about it. I have no idea about it. And that's it. So they like your honesty. They like your right answer or practical answer instead of giving the fishy answer or sugar coated answer like that. I hope this is clear, slightly long video, but sorry about that. But please use these steps. If you really want to add some other tips, please feel free to add it. Maybe you may differ with my opinion or you want to add something, you can add it in the comment section. Till then, take care. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much, guys.